I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication so that they will look on me whom they have pierced and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son and they will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping over a firstborn. It'll be like the great mourning in Jerusalem will be like the mourning at Hadad Ramon in the plain of Megiddo, a town in Megiddo where King Josiah, the last good king, was slain by the Egyptian army, recorded in Second Chronicles 35, and there was massive mourning over his death. It's going to be that kind of, of mourning. You say, wait a minute, they've just had a massive triumph. Shouldn't there be a celebration? No, because whatever they may have believed in the past about Yahweh is now dramatically altered. Because God will choose in that generation to pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, everybody from the common people to the most elite, the spirit of grace and of supplication. They will look on me whom they have pierced and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. They will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping over a firstborn. Think about it. The Jews of that generation are going to realize that all the previous generations of Jews going back to Christ are in hell. When you try to evangelize people who are Jewish, the thing they cling to is not intellectual, it's familial, it's family. If I believe what you say, I sentence my ancestors to perdition. When that dawns on them, and I think what they're going to say is basically Isaiah 53. The awareness is going to come, he was wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquities, smitten for our peace. And we thought he was nothing. We thought he was nobody. The generations and generations of unbelieving Jews will produce the reality of sadness that be hard to even comprehend. Jewish people are very, very strong in their family connections. When that day comes, there's the salvation of Israel, the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of divine grace. God pursues and God pours out He drenches them with his Holy Spirit. Ezekiel 39, 24 puts it this way. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, I dealt with them and I hid my face from them. It's going to go from God hiding himself to God drenching them with his Holy Spirit. 